Hey, Patrick, long time no talk. The one thing I didn't ask you was, what are you doing nowadays? What's keeping you busy? What's your passion right now? Yeah, uh, well, right now, just just living life, truthfully. And um, there's a couple of projects I have going on uh, at this moment. Um, doing a little bit of work with the with a platform called CoachTube, which is an online coaching platform. Right now, uh, primarily caters to coaches to coaches, but uh, we're trying to work on some other avenues as we build out. So um, that's a little bit of my focus these days and then just, just living life. Hey, Patrick, it's Cam Inman of the, of the Mercury News. Congratulations. Uh, I want to test your memory bank here. And do you remember what it was like the first and the last time you put on a 49er uniform? Uh, Ken, what's happening? What's happening? Um, I do remember um, my first, what I remember most about the first time I put on the uniform, it was actually just the the, um, the shoulder pads, I guess it would be, or um, i trying to think what it was. It would have been my first uh, what rookie mini camp. Uh, walking out, you know, that first time with how everything was at the old, uh, the old uh, facility. I remember walking out, and before I walked out the doors, before I walked out those practice doors, you know, you have the the uh, what you call I call the the forty nine way, you know, that you can read that wall. I remember as I walked around that wall and I looked out onto the practice field. I remember saying to myself, "Man, you know, what a journey." Um, what a journey so far, but it's just beginning. Um, this is my new home. I'm gonna give it everything I have. And I was like, man, I can't believe I'm a 49 out of all the NFL teams. You know, I'm a, I'm a 49 because I, you know, growing up, I was a big Cowboys fan as as I was mentioned before. And to be walking out in a 49 uniform, it was it was different, but it was it was me. Um, the last time I remember putting on the uniform was um, October. Uh, 13th Monday Night Football against the St. Louis Rams. Uh, I call it uh, the last injury. <laughs> um, but yeah, those are my you know two vivid uh, uh, the ones I remember most. Hey Patrick, Jake Hutchinson, KMBR. Uh, I'm just wondering sort of what your impression is of Fred Warner and Drake Greenlaw sort of taking the mantle from you and Navarro. Uh, and, and sort of how you have seen the linebacker position change over the last few years? Yeah, uh, just, man, Dre and Fred, I mean, those guys have been playing unbelievable football. Um, they have worked really well together. Fred have done a great job of leading the linebacker core. And for me, um, I'm really excited to see that. You know, I'm always happy for the next man's success and to be a part of, you know, um, a linebacker. Uh, legacy to leave, you know, to leave something behind that others can, you know, grab a hold of and make their own. You know, it feels really special. And Navarro and I, you know, uh, along with those who came before us, um, only try to do that and to see them, you know, doing their thing now is uh, it's amazing to see. Hey, Patrick, Tracy Sandler from Fangirl Sports Network. Congratulations. I was just wondering if you could take us kind of through the emotions of, of when you found out, how you found out, and what your initial thoughts were. Yeah, uh, well, hello, Tracy. Um, when I first found out, I was actually on my way to a, a friend's uh, event. I was actually up in the hills, and I missed a call from uh, Jed, and then I saw some text messages, and then I saw, I think it was, I want to say maybe it was, uh, guy that had uh, called me and I was kind of saying to myself, I'm like, hmm, <laughs> you know, what's going on? And um, and then when they told me, you know, I was just, um, you know, I was, you know, it always takes me a little bit of time for things to sink in. Um, but, you know, it, it probably won't sink in all the way until after, you know, I'm in there and, um, and everything. But, you know, I'm just truly honored and, and grateful to, you know, get that call. Um, yeah, just, um, just, Honored. Hey, Patrick. Jennifer, how are you? Congratulations. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Jennifer, Jennifer. Yes, yes. How are you doing? What have you seen for the 40? 
were playing, if you return to that cluster, maybe like in the 2019 season, what have you seen from the 49ers defense more? Uh, I'm so sorry, Jennifer. I did, I barely could hear you breaking it. It was going in that only. Um, what have you seen from the 49ers defense, maybe from the 2019 season and on? It's kind of returned to it of dominance like it did when you were there yeah yeah um just to, i know i'm a firm believer that you know the defense you know runs the show i know the offense is pretty and everything but to see but when you have a defense that's just that's dominant and i was able to you know i had to go through those growing pains those first four years of you know my uh nfl career but then those last four seasons you know i was able to well i guess you would say 2011 12 and and 13, um, you know, it's really amazing to play with the defense where, you know, across the board from defense line to linebackers to linebackers, uh, I'm sorry, from defense line to linebackers to DBs were just, you know, amazing. And so to see those guys, you know, the team they had in 2019, it was, or what was it, seven, 18? Or whenever it was, it went to the Super Bowl. I mean, that, that defense was on point and, you know, to see them have a down year like they did last year, but to still see a guy, you know, or guys such as, you know, uh, Fred and Dre still continue to, you know, lead those guys in that, in that defensive line, you know, especially them having the injuries they had across the board, continue to play as well as they did. And the DBs didn't, didn't play um, too bad as well. They actually played really well. So I'm excited. I am excited for the defense and what they will be able to do once they get all their pieces together. And I know, you know, the offense is going to do their thing as well. So I'm, I'm excited for D'Amico uh, as well. I know it's a big opportunity for him and uh, just very excited. SEC guy. So let's go. Hey, Pat. Long time no see. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just wanted to know, like, now that we're about 12 hours after the news has been released, what's been the reaction? Have you heard from a lot of former teammates or maybe current 49ers? What has it been like? Uh, yeah, it's been, you know, I've gotten a lot of, you know, with social media, you know, I've gotten messages, a lot of congratulations. And truthfully, you know, this is for anyone, as I said before, who had a part in this journey, um, especially the faithful um, you know, I, uh, this is for them. You know, I, I take a part of them uh, with me. Um, and yeah, it's just been, you know, it's been amazing to get the, get the love, to receive the love and I give it back to them all. So I appreciate, appreciate them all. Patrick, I have two questions for you. One of them, because you just mentioned D'Amico, how long have you known D'Amico? Um, and just, have you ever, did you always think of him since you've known him as a guy who is, you know, on that track to be a coach and, and maybe even someday a head coach. The other thing is probably not as, as great of a topic for, for you. You know, you've often talked about your feet. Can you, have you ever been told you know, what was wrong with your feet and have, have they given you problems after football? Have you had to have other surgeries? Just how are you able to kind of get around life now uh, with, with your feet? All right, Matt, Matt, you gave me two two uh, amazing questions. And uh, all right, let me start with uh, the D'Amico. Uh, the the D'Amico, you know, I, I've been um, been a fan of his since college. You know, playing in the SEC, um, him playing in Alabama, me playing at Ole Miss. Obviously, Alabama was, you know, is the school. You know, uh, uh, got a lot of hype, but rightfully, you know, rightfully so. And D'Amico was one of, was one of those guys. I remember. As a junior, I think it was, um, and he was a senior, but he was with that senior class of AJ Hulk uh, and some other guys. And I was thinking about coming out that year, but I was dealing with the injury, um, actually a foot injury <laughs> uh, in college then. And so I decided to stay in, but I was kind of aware of those guys a little bit. And obviously once I was drafted, I was, you know, kind of, I don't want to say follow him, but I was aware, you know, I was, I was aware of, you know, other guys throughout the league. and just a big fan of what he was doing um, in Houston. And he just always reminded me of, um, you know, from afar, reminded me of a guy that would be uh, just like a be an amazing coach by the way he, you know, uh, uh, you know, commanded the field, uh, worked with the field, worked with his teammates. And, you know, I never heard of anything, you know, out of the way about him. So, 
you know, I, I'm, again, I'm excited for what he do. Uh, I'm excited for the potential that I know that he possesses, but obviously potential is just potential. But, you know, I feel like those guys are really going to buy into, you know, what he has. And I think it's already similar things. He might put a little bit of his own touch, which, you know, again, I'm, I'm excited to see. Um, so, yeah, wishing him nothing but the best. Um, and then uh, with my feet. Uh, you know, the the thing with my feet was, you know, and I didn't talk about it a lot, and I won't really get into a whole lot of details now, but I, I was kind of battling them, battling my feet early on, and there was some conversations, you know, um, had at that time where I was kind of like, hey, listen, you know, I, I feel like I want to get these things, you know, worked on, because both of them were just as bad, and that's the one thing that I couldn't really, you know, say a whole lot on. I know people are like, it's just a feet, like it's just a freaking toe, get it better. But that wasn't just, that wasn't the case. It was almost equivalent to ACL and my big toes and whatnot. And, you know, of course, anyone who has, has like a bunion on your big toes, you know how bad those can feel, especially if you're flat footed as it is. And so that's where all my torque and everything I push off of. And so it was after I had my surgery, I mean, it was bad. I, I really tried my best to push through that month. I said, you know what, as, as all the injuries I've ever had, I was like, you know, I'm going to push through it. You know, I'm going to, you know, mind over matter. But for whatever reason, this right was just not the case. It was almost as if I had known, you know, it, you know that, that, that when my feet said enough, that that's when I would, you know, have to hang them up. So, but long story short, you know, the doc had told me, he said, uh, um, he said, wow, what told the person who was there with me at the surgery said, you know, wow, I cannot believe, you know, he was able to play with his, you know, with his toe like that. You know, it was worse than we we thought. And I was like, man, when she told me that, I, I just remember saying to myself, like, <laughs> you know, I if you ask my teammates what was the one thing I complained about, you know, and I try not to complain. I'm a very grateful person, but man, you know, way these feet felt, you know, uh, again, mostly in the big toes and whatnot. Um, you know, it was just at the point where I was like, man, it was taken away from my mental side of the game. It was just, you know, it was that point where I tell anyone, it's when, it's not life itself, but it's when you start dealing with a bunch of aggravating stuff that just won't go away, that life starts to get a nuisance and aggravating and you just start being like angry and stuff or whatnot. And I just didn't want to be that type of player along with knowing that my other toe was just as bad and them saying, you know, you know, at some point, you know, you have to get surgery on your other one too. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, hell no, man. I don't want to be retired, excuse me, but I don't want to be retired and having to go get more and more surgeries as I was seeing, you know, guys, you know, have to do throughout, you know, after their retirement. So, um, so they're not bad. Obviously, you know, I, I, I've learned how to, you know, listen to myself. Like still, you know, I try to stay active, um, but, uh, that, you know, I can do that. I can still be active, but I, I know how much, you know, to give and when to be like, okay, you know, that's enough. So, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm well. Uh, I'm not waking up thinking about, man, I'm going to have to go put on these cleats and, you know, be on this turf for it. Man, we're going to have to play, you know, as a matter of fact, speaking of um, whomever it was, uh, f forgive me, they asked me about the uh, last, you know, uh, about remembering the jerseys. My last time, I mean, my first time putting it on and the last time putting it on. And one thing I remember about the, that game, October 13th, was uh, thinking to myself the whole week leading up into that game, Monday Night Football, was, man, we're going to be playing on turf. Man, you know, the, the stage is going to be, you know, it's going to be on me. Um, man, you know, just all the stuff that I would think about when I have to go play on turf, I really play on grass because it wasn't as bad on my feet. But I just remember saying to myself, like, just praying, Lord, just let my feet hold up, let my feet hold up. And I never forget that that game. If you go back and you know watch it or even talk to my talk to Manny, um, I could not get my feet situated at all that game. Like I just couldn't like no spat work. It's like I couldn't get my feet comfortable, and that's when I was just like, man, this. How much more? How much more longer can I can I keep this up? You know, it's it's like on the outside looking in, it's like oh man, it looks amazing. But I was like, <laughs> so anyways, a lot of that to, again, just remembering what it was, you know, um, just remember what what it was like. Those many thoughts on my feet and whatnot. So yeah. All right, we'll do our last ones. 
Patrick, what's the biggest influence had on your life off? I'm I'm sorry. How? What's the biggest impact the 49ers have had on your life off? What's the biggest impact that the 49ers have had on my life off the field? Um, at this moment, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, um, you know, it's, it's still, it's still, I feel like it's still a lot of life, uh, knock on wood, uh, left. And so I feel like we've yet to have, you know, that I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for the moments and times that we, you know, have conversations, whether it be with Jared or whether it be for moments like, you know, this or other little moments that, you know, I get back up there and do some, um, um fan engagement or whatnot but you know i think it's just you know i, I don't know i don't i don't expect anything i don't ask for too much you know I, I had a job to do and i just try to do it at the best of our abilities at a high level and and you know looking back i hope that it was i hope, hope that i made them proud um you know wearing that wearing that jersey um and the fans and just anyone that who's associated um uh, with the organization but yeah i Again, I, it's not one thing I can just think of off the top of my head outside of just, you know, them saying, you know, you're always welcome. So. Apologies, Pat. We'll actually sneak one more in here. Yeah, yeah, please. Hey, hey, Patrick, congratulations. William Hammond, sports fans, rapper. And it's good to see you still got that great smile and, and attitude. What, what have you learned about yourself? since you've been away from the game and then also your thoughts on uh the social um activity that the players have been involved in uh now it's a little different from when you were in the in the game and, and just give me your thoughts on those those two things yeah hey, was sports fan and rap thanks for um, coming on um man what have i learned about myself <laughs> I've learned, um, I've learned a lot, you know, I've learned a lot about myself, you know, um, a lot of soul searching, um, you know, just a lot of, you know, I, I've always been a person who likes to, you know, think a lot as it is. And so just, you know, learning, learning a lot about my, myself, um, um, what, what would I say? Um, yeah, it's just, it's, that's the everyday, that's the everyday thing. Um, and then I'm sorry. What was the what was the the last question? The second question. The second question was involving the um, uh, the social active activeness of the players these days. You know, they've been involved in a lot of in opinions on a lot of the social activities that's taking place. You know, around the country. What are your thoughts on that? The importance of it and and. Since you, you didn't get a chance or you guys weren't doing that as much at that time, but you know, these guys are, are pretty vocal now. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I'm a firm believer that, you know, that it's it's said that, you know, we, we have freedom of speech here. Um, you know, with that being said, you know, I feel like everyone has a has a perspective or opinion to have an opinion. Um uh, for me, you know, I've just been the type of person that I've I don't know. I, I would say I've learned to be more silent than, you know, um, just outspoken unless, you know, unless there's something that's deep down inside of me that has to come out. Um, so, and, and with that being said, I'm the type of person that when I do speak about something, I would have to have had knowledge on it, uh, you know, done my own research, uh, you know, try to have some kind of so I can so I can have some kind of ground, solid ground to stand on. Uh, again, you know, there's a lot of things going on in the world. There's a lot of, you know, noise. Um, and, you know, I, so I, you know, I just try not to get too caught up in it. However, you know, I, I have my own personal um, opinions here and there, you know, I don't try to go out and make them be heard. However, if someone asks, you know, I, I try to deviate a little bit, but, you know, I'm also, you know, a type of person that I you know I have to be who, who I am and, and, you know, say the two cents that I do have, you know, if, if I'm asked, I suppose. But yeah, to each his own. Yeah. Jennifer, is it? Sorry. Patrick, can you just tell us what your Instagram handle means? Uh, my program handle, which. Uh, what your Instagram handle means. 
Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm working at this moment of, you know, starting my, um, you know, I would say I'm going to say corporation. You know, I'm a little shy to, to say it, but it's, it's, you know, more of a philosophical brain because as I say, you know, I like to think a lot. Not only do I like to think, but you know, after you've lived a little bit, experienced a little bit, you know, you begin to have your own thoughts, you begin to have your, you know, think on your own, you begin to, you know, have your, your you know, you have your beliefs, you you, you have your, um, you know, again, you have your own philosophical thoughts or whatnot. And, and I'm the type of person that, you know, I've always listened to others or read others and try to take a little bit from each person. So, but my my name kind of comes about you know it, it's it's the winker's mind and what it is is two words you know put together um you know uh i always say you like to think like anybody you know you have thoughts and you find yourself thinking and and that's how you know that's how i am and so i began to just you know ask myself you know like where where am i where are these thoughts coming from you know going back to uh sports family asking whatever i learned about myself you know and really it's just learning a lot about, you know, why I think the way that I think, why do I move the way that I move, you know, why do I make the decisions the way that I make them? And so with that being said, I was reading some, uh, reading some stuff and I think I came across some old English and the old English was something like, you know, they speak in from hence and from whence, you know? And so I was, I was looking at the words and I was like, hmm, from, um, from hence, you know, uh, from hence something comes, man, like from here. And from whence meant like from where, and so I just said, from you know, where do I think these things, or where do I think these thoughts? So I'm like, they come from within, and so I just you know put whence and hence together, and that's where you get the linker's mind. So, um, so I, I know it's a little, little bit more to it, but again, that's you know, I just that, that's that side of me that you know um, that's beyond the game of just X and O's or whatnot. You know, I like to think you know metaphysical and quantum physical and sacred geometry and just you know all that that fun stuff that makes my mind um, feel intrigued all right everybody thanks for joining us thank you pat congrats again and, and if i and if i can I, I, again i've said it before and i you know said a little bit in my quote but again to you know to to everyone um who had a part in this journey, uh, especially, you know, to my family, uh, highs, lows, in-betweens, uh, you know, I'm, I'm grateful, you know, my roots are my roots and I'm grateful for, for, for them, for everyone. And the journey has been amazing. And, uh, uh, and to the faithful, um, you know, thank you all for, you know, just your love and support in all my years uh, with the Niners, uh, to the organization, you know, I, I thank them. And just, you know, I, I don't know if I said this before or so said it out loud, but to the chefs, man, to the chefs, to, to, the, to Manny, to the equipment guys uh, who had to deal with me and my feet 24-7, um, the equipment guys, um, uh, Doc, Steve, um, man, I, I, it goes on to, to Manny, to Nate, to Ferg. I mean, those would be the guys when you, if you were ever going to ask, like, now what was his feet like? I know they can't even speak on it for, you know, medical sakes or whatnot, but they would be able to tell you, like, man, we had our times. Um, so, <laughs> um, so yeah, so to everyone, to everyone, I really do uh, appreciate it. And shout out to, to, to um, Brian Young, because I found out, you know, that he had made it into the, Fort Niners Hall of Fame as well, but um, because of the, of the pandemic, wasn't wasn't able to, you know, give him that love and be wise someone that you know I have a, a extreme respect for, um, and so um, congrats to him and then and to to John Taylor man, I, I, it's it's funny how it's a full circle now because these are some guys that you know I, I've been a younger guy, you know having you know they come back for different functions and you know, you see them and you talk to them and. And you know you get a little bit, uh, you get a little bit in, but then just the, the more time you do it, you realize like, man, I would have loved to been this guy's uh, teammate, uh, these guys' teammates. You know, the, the older guys who came before me, and John Taylor was one of the ones that every time I see him, man, I, I love just listening to him talk and hearing his many stories. And to be going into the 49ers Hall of Fame with him, uh, truly honor. He, he's a person. 
he's a person that I think it was the, after the 2012 season, I was watching the um, uh, the path to the, you know, the Super Bowls that, you know, the 49ers, I forget what they call that. But I was watching, I, I would watch those, you know, watching how they talk about one another, watch how they talk about the seasons. But you know how there's always that that one person that, that me personally, again, I grew up a Cowboys fan, you know, but with that being said, you know who Jerry Rice was and great, all respect to great Jerry Rice. You know who Steve Young, uh, Joe Montana, um, you know, Tom Rapp, you hear, you hear who those guys was, but I didn't. I was watching film and I would see this guy catching balls, like catching slants and getting hit and taking it to the house. And this is how I've always been since I was a kid. Like I had guys who you, who you like, you know, who you heard the big names that you'd be like, oh, of course you're going to like them. But I was also a big fan of those guys who you could just, you just watch the game and you'd be like, man, that guy right there gives it everything he got every play. You know, uh, that, that guy right there, they don't talk about him, they don't say his name a lot, but I'm noticing that guy right there, like he, He's always doing something, you know, to make big plays. And so anyways, I would watch, I would watch him, you know, uh, I'm watching these watching these back-to-back, you know, runs to the Super Bowl or these runs to the Super Bowl, and I'm seeing this guy catch out. It wasn't it wasn't number 80. I seen this, I seen this other guy catching catching passes and taking it to the house. And I was like, man, this guy here is really good. Like, how come that, you know, how come I don't hear anything? Like, how come I don't hear anybody talking about this who this fella is and then before you know it like you know after you know 2013 you know there's been times where you know we've been in the same place and I've been able to talk to him and just realizing that man this is the same guy and then just seeing just his personality um you know I again I'm just man this is I'm honored it's not even so much about you know Patrick going into the 49 Hall of Fame as great grateful as I am but really just you know Going in with a guy like that, uh, you know, knowing the BY, you know, is you know, it was the year before and then just, you know, been in there the, the other day, um, uh doing an interview with Keanu, like, you know, it, it was just uh it was amazing to just feel all that that energy and history and then just to be a part of that now. Again, I'm gonna stop rambling, but again, thank you all to all the media who covered it or whatnot. Um, I appreciate you all as well. Um try to be um yeah. Before I keep on going, thank you. Good one.